All right. Good. Hello. Edgar. Hi, Nicolas. Hi. Hi, Laura. Hi, Ajit. Hello. Hi, Eden. Hello. Oh, yeah. Everybody's coming. Oh, good. Maybe good to wait a few minutes. Yeah. So before we <clears throat> get started, how are things going? Everything fine? Very good. Yes, Thanks. everything's fine. How about you? Everything's fine. Very good. Thank you. Missing or will you be friends? <laughs> <laughs> we are missing you also, Jeannie. <laughs> you were saved by the bell. I heard you're going to in lockdown. Here in Barranquilla, most likely also, we're starting very strict measures again. So yeah. you were both lucky, Nicolai and Abel, for being well, able to yeah. escape and, and enjoy the trip in Colombia. Well, basically, today <laughs> they announced the lockdown here in Belgium, too. Yeah. Starting of yeah, Saturday, terrible. I think. Mm -hmm. So with a bell now we are locked at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you need to have uh, at least two bottles of wine and <laughs> wait without any any difficulty at all. <laughs> Edgar, it is allowed to go to the shop, so. Uh, we can easily fix this. Two, three <laughs> bottles more. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, four of them at home. So four. <laughs> four. <laughs> oh, okay. Just in case. Just in case. So Edgar is ready for the lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and also with uh, some um, Belgian beers. Ah. <laughs> Leffe, the Leffe one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So this is the cultural component of those projects, right? <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> Without that, it's not uh, really a good project. Edgar, in Bulgaria, it is Rakia. Rakia, yeah. Rakia. I'll be waiting for uh, taking at least one shot of Rakia. Rakia. Yeah. Ilya can take care of this. Uh, oh, yeah. Very good. 
Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> uh, so first, uh, many thanks to well, all Colombian friends for the hospitality. Uh, CESA, Uni Savana, uh, Uni Norte, Uni Magdalena, uh, UTB. Thank you very much to everyone uh, for the wonderful week that we had. So we have seen a lot of, uh, well, let's say uh, internal university goodwill and eagerness to be involved in this project. Uh, we have seen various uh, authorities at the universities, people from various uh, departments and offices in the university, quite nice dynamics. Uh, at the same time, very complementary uh, to each other. So uh, I can only encourage you guys to keep in touch uh, with each other and discuss what each university is doing, uh, what are different offices, what are different complementarities, how things are done. So to keep uh, that dynamic also floating. Uh, in addition, uh, we met social entrepreneurs, uh, quite innovative ones, quite sophisticated ones. Uh, and also, um, uh, we met one project in quite poor area uh, of Cartagena, uh, where a company uh, and their foundation are supporting uh, not only the education and development uh, uh, over there, but also the entrepreneurship of, uh, of this area. So, well, <clears throat> uh, next to the nice weather and uh, the mojitos that we were mentioning uh, uh, last Wednesday, uh, we enjoyed very much uh, the wonderful dynamic uh, last week. Right now, uh, Abel and I are locked down uh, in quarantine uh, till probably the next Monday. But uh, once we come out, out of the quarantine, there will be nothing to do uh, in Belgium. So we will stay in quarantine probably a little longer. <laughs> so Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, let's uh, go to the agenda of today. Just a second, I will share my screen. Uh, if a bell allows me at least to share my screen. Is it possible now? No. No, let me check. Um, ah, now it's possible. Thank you, Alva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so in terms of uh, agenda for today, uh, Genie will present uh, Working Package 5, uh, Management. Uh, some committees uh, need to be uh, established, so we'll present the establishment of uh, those committees and what needs uh, to happen. Um, we are using this uh, IT tool, Basecamp. Uh, Abel will uh, present the practicalities uh, of it and will guide you through the possibilities of base camp. Uh, then there are two presentations from colleagues uh, from VUB. One is about the financials and financial rules. And the other is uh, about uh, the general principles uh, of Erasmus Plus projects uh, with a special attention for the current situation in COVID and where to pay attention and how to work. Uh, next, uh, Edgar and Andrea will uh, present the plans for uh, working package one preparation um, and uh, uh, also <clears throat> last week, uh, several sub working package two members 
uh, voiced uh, the idea to uh, to do some research and gather some data. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll try to combine those needs together with uh, working package preparation. Uh, and uh, the, again, the last session of today will be uh, an open event uh, roundtable. Uh, roundtable uh, around what is needed to create a vibrant ecosystem in support of social entrepreneurs. Uh, where Peter, Peter Young van de Velde from Trivident, Lady Mickey Mulder from Enactus, uh, Raida Mana from uh, Social Back, uh, and uh, Sergio, uh, uh, Sergio Pasquero from the Peruvian and Social Incubator uh, will share their activities and, uh, and ideas. <coughs> uh, well, again, a reminder, we need uh, to finish uh, 10 minutes before 5 o'clock uh, Belgian time. Um, so we can go to the open event meeting uh, and this, uh, well, forces us to be on, the, on time with the agenda uh, as well. Uh, so it would be good to, to stick to the timing of the agenda and to give also some space for, for discussion. A um, few practicalities that uh, I want uh, to mention. Uh, well, there are several templates uh, about uh, timesheets, uh, joint declaration forums, uh, and travel report forms that will be uh, or that are on Basecamp and uh, will create tutorials to guide you through. Of course, uh, if you have questions, you can always reach out to discuss, but those templates uh, are already on ba Basecamp. Um, uh, please use them, uh, bear in mind uh, uh, their importance. Uh, then our travel schedule is uh, already uh, a little bit uh, adapted. Um, the kickoff meeting was supposed to happen in Brussels. Well, it's happening right now uh, in each place uh, where you live or work. Uh, so it is online. Um, uh, this means that uh, the travel budgets uh, are remaining unused. Uh, at this stage, uh, it is not a good idea to present to the uh, agency, European agency, any adaptations before we have a better visibility on, on the situation. Uh, but once we have a visibility, we'll propose something. Uh, then the travel schedule is uh, to Barranquilla in September, uh, to Cochabamba uh, September 22, and to Lima uh, September 23. Uh, so we were discussing with uh, Ginny very play preliminary ideas if uh, we can organize uh, something in, uh, in Barranquilla, October, November. Uh, we will keep the discussions uh, and yeah, we will see basically what is possible according to the COVID situation. But keep in mind that uh, this is uh, an idea, even if it's uh, only possible from people from Colombia to, to travel to Barranquilla or through people from the region, or depending on uh, what is the situation and how we can organize, uh, it would be good to, uh, to have that uh, mobility, of course, only if it is... Um, possible and only if it is safe uh, for everyone's health. I think that we are discussing this possibility. Uh, another uh, thing that I wanted to mention and uh, we need to start preparing uh, is the purchase of equipment. 
uh, in the project proposal, uh, we mentioned that we will purchase equipment uh, for the social entrepreneurs to be able to access the platform. Uh, there, uh, in addition, I think students uh, could be also uh, part of the beneficiaries. Each university from uh, Latin America has uh, 17,000 uh, budget for that. European universities don't have uh, budget for this. Uh, but in the project, we didn't uh, mention anything or any detail. Uh, what is this equipment exactly? How much? How do we deal with it? So uh, our question is, could you please prepare uh, your needs and send to us uh, before the end of April so we can discuss and take up, take up the practicalities? So first we want to see what are the needs and then to streamline and uh, uh, and see what to propose to the agency uh, later in the year. Given the current uh, situation with COVID, with lockdowns, with everything, uh, well, it would be good to, to keep activities floating uh, as much as possible. Uh, when possible online with online events with online discussions uh, when possible uh, in unlimited group of uh, of people uh, or visiting social entrepreneurs uh, we'll leave this uh, uh, to you but it would be good to keep uh, the dynamic floating it would be good uh, to keep projects social enterprises uh, uh, and uh, and tools floating toward the platform. Uh, so uh, the footprint of um, uh, of our project grows. Um, I was very happy to see all the communication going on uh, and uh, the uh, the videos uh, sharing and floating uh, around, uh, which basically create visibility for uh, not only for our project, but most importantly for the needs of social entrepreneurs and uh, how we can uh, support them. So I would say, please be creative. It is, uh, those are difficult circumstances. Uh, last week, uh, I mentioned the extra mile, but I think in the current difficult circumstances, uh, social entrepreneurs uh, need us the most. And this is that I uh, wanted to share with you. Um, I don't know if there are questions or comments. And if not, uh, happy to give uh, the just floor a quick to question, uh, Nikolai. Uh, yes, Rashid. Sorry, uh, two questions, just short clarification. Uh, on these practicalities, you uh, mentioned September 2021, and then in bracket, uh, in preparation for October, November. So you mean uh, the September 2021 is not likely to happen. So we are thinking of shifting the travel to October, November 2021. Um, <clears throat> yes, so um, the initial plan was uh, to match the travel uh, in September with the summit uh, that we are organizing at the beginning of September. Uh, and so uh, before we received the acceptance of the project, uh, we decided that the summit will take place uh, in uh, Guayaquil. So it is uh, even not sure if it will take place uh, physically in Guayaquil. We still need to decide this. Uh, but uh, it would be a huge burden if we start to uh, 
uh, reorient the travel from uh, Barranquilla to Guayaquil. Because for the European Union, this is totally a new budget proposal. Uh, because then Gini uh, right now and uh, Vanessa, they will not travel and everyone from uh, Uninorte. Uh, if it is in Barranquilla, they don't travel. But now if it is in Ecuador, they have to travel. Uh, and the whole travel uh, schedule uh, gets uh, complicated. So we discussed uh, if it's not better, uh, well, okay, to have the summit, uh, we will see if we can organize the summit uh, uh, physically or we organize it online. Uh, we'll need to decide soon because of communication. Purpose. Whereas the travel to Barranquilla, uh, we can see in which different options we can start organizing and plan now in a more modular way. So we can organize in groups of people, not everyone together. We can uh, organize uh, uh, there something locally for the region, but uh, the visibility from here to October is not very high. And if possible, we will organize something. If not possible, yeah, probably we will not organize. Yeah. So. If I understood it correctly, then given the uncertainty around travel because of the COVID uh, right now, provisionally, uh, you are keeping October, November as a potential date for travel to Barranquilla, but what actually yeah. happened, we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and just one more short clarification. When you say local university, do you mean Latin American university or uh, what does it mean local? Uh, I mean all universities, so I think there could be dynamics at your university that you would be interested uh, as well, cases at your, your university that could uh, be interesting for everyone. Yeah, okay, so we can maybe discuss this basic uh, thing bilaterally or I can take it up with Abel, because I am an, sure. me and Abel, for example, are discussing a potential link for a social entrepreneurship course. Uh, that will run in the winter secretary Unigras for such a course linking this to Elanet is possible. Uh, in your case, yes. Yeah, that's what Because you also have in your budget mobility of students. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I don't, uh, if I remember correctly, no other university has that. Yeah, I, I uh, or to have that because that of project. this. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So clear, yeah. Thank you. Okay, very good. So then I propose to go further to the presentation of uh, Jeannie. Okay, thank you. Hello to everyone. I'm going to share uh, my screen. Let me know if it's okay for you. Thank you, Vanessa, for the Good. help. Good, okay. Okay, um, good afternoon. And good morning to all the colleagues and partners of this promising LNET project. Thank you, Nikolai, for confiding in Uninorte to support VUB in the management of this initiative. This is a project where our expertise, our leadership, our guidance, our support is absolutely essential. So we as a team can move forward in a very efficient, an effective way in order to reach the objectives of this project and of course of these social entrepreneurs. I will provide um, an overview of the management approach and the governance structure and some details regarding the management committee, the advisory committee, the advisory board, the technical oh. committee and the work package subcommittees. I'm sorry, am my screen is to stop? So, okay. Yes. Second. Yes. Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm going Second. to stop sharing and do low. Sorry for that. Yeah, technical issues. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why. Can move forward. 
maybe maybe i will try yeah. to share it from here vanessa once yeah time. please thank you thank you about know, it's my, it's my internet connection has some stuff today yeah one second okay okay so i will yeah now i will try to share So is this? Yeah. This good. Is, yes, that's good. We did a uh, presentation. Like this. That's... Okay, the, yeah. the following a bell? Yeah, okay. It's okay. Okay, this is what I was discussing, that I, that I will provide the overview of the, the management approach, um, the governance structure, and some details regarding the management committee, advisory board, technical committee, and work package subcommittees. For the management approach, um, we have the following responsibilities to follow up with the specific deadlines and activity plan, as well as to control the work packages, execution, performance, and responsibilities, um, to follow up on the administration of the budget and expenditures in according, according to the rules of the agency and the program, to follow up also on the different reports and evaluation, including the risk management and assessment, and at a later stage of the project, we have the external evaluation and financial audit. To move forward um, with the management approach, we have set a governance structure where we would like to reinforce the importance of the integration of all the committees and subcommittees. Um, we would, the management committee's objective is to monitor um, the implementation of the project, always seeking the fulfillment of these objectives and goals. This committee is led by Professor Nikolai. Um, we will count with an advisory board, which will provide the guidance of the consortium on the technical development of the platform, particularly the content of various work package two activities. And the technical committee's primary role is to improve the launch of a final version of the LNN platform led by Coalect. Work package one, which is the preparation subcommittee, will ensure the proper development of the project um, led by um, SBOL. And work package two, which we call like the heart of the project, the development subcommittee led by BUB will develop all the needed activities online and offline to launch, um, to be able to launch at the end of the project, the fully operated IT tool in support of social entrepreneurs. They're supported by five objectives coordinated by the different partners. Um, we have the development of the platform led by COELEC, the capacity building of higher education institutions led by Ashoka, that's A2.2. A 2.3 is the mobilization of higher education institutions, faculty, students, and staff led by UniNorte. 2.4 is the mobilization of higher education stakeholder networks led by Uni Magdalena and Piura. And 2.5 is the development of the open educational resources led by Universidad Mayor de San Simón. Work package three, which is quality and insurance is an important pillar in this organic structure led by um, Uni Savannah and Uni Magdalena, which will execute all the different activities re related to the continuous improvement. And finally, work package four, dissemination and exploitation. So committee is led by CESA Colombia, will communicate, promote, and disseminate all project information. This is important to highlight that for the management committee, we must um, select substitutes of each of its members. Um, and, and, and Abel, can you help me with that? Okay. With the management committee, um, the composition of this management committee, according um, to our project, um, our project is comprised of, composed of three European and four Latin American um, partner institutions represented as follows. Um, of, um, as I mentioned, um, Professor Nicolai is the chair, co-coordinated by UniNorte. And these are the um, institutions uh, that are members of the management committee, LUMSA, UNIGRAS, Ashoka, UNISAVANA, ESPOL, and UDEP. And here's where I mentioned it is necessary, and it was a good recommendation from um, one of our partner institutions to be to um, to select some substitutes for each of the members. The different activities that will um, decisions that we will take place uh, will be regarding all the follow up um, decisions, also regarding the administration, the financial matters, um, uh, implementation, reporting, and dissemination. And we will have monthly meetings. Of course, we would be supported by key contacts at the management um, side from BUB. You all know Abel Diaz, 
and um, Patricia Fernandez and some other members of the BUB team, which we'll be meeting today. But also on the part of Uninorte, uh, Vanessa Garcia will be helping me with the management um, of the project. Okay. And we will have um, the advisory board advises the consortium on work package two uh, um, activities. The initial structure, as you see, is quite a large group. And we reviewed the, um, um, we reviewed this issue and we proposed a new structure, which was approved by our program officer this morning. Um, I saw uh, where we have four to six members in this uh, advisory board that can be com um, com composed of experts from the list of associated partners and external stakeholders, ESSER, Belgium Impact, Enactus, IKEA Social Enterprise, Acumen, and uh, Recognized Social Entrepreneur or Recognized Scholar. The frequency of the meetings will be at month three, nine, 21, and 33. Okay, our technical committee advises on the technical aspects of the platform um, to launch a final version of the platform. As I mentioned, the members uh, would be four to six members. The approach will be interdisciplinary, including IT, communications, social networks, and design experts, predominantly external experts, and with the participation of Latin American with experience in developing tools. The frequency of the meetings will be um, biannually. Okay, regarding the work, working packages subcommittee, they are, we, they are self organized. Work package one and work package two are defined according to the work plan. Work package three and four. We are looking for members to volunteer to join. Work package five is the same as the management committee and all European institutions serve as advisory roles for the distinct work packages. There's a call to action to remind you of the vital importance to assign the colleagues to each of your institutions, to each work package team, according um, aligned and according to their interests, to ex expertise and leadership needed for each work package, as well as their subcommittees. We need this to be able to articulate the teams and to work synchronized between all partners and at the end to foster these institutional relationships and social entrepreneurship ecosystems between the European and the Latin American partners. And definitely to ensure the sustainability of the project even after three years, once the project is finished. Thank you very much. Well, let's Ellen it. I see that's the new term. Let's Ellen it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you have any questions that uh, maybe the our management, um, um, Nikolai, Professor Nikolai, and I can also clear? Thanks, <coughs> Jenny. Yes, indeed. And then. Uh, more than a question, there was a slide on the follow-ups, uh, the different areas that the management committee will be following up. I have a suggestion that after the dissemination, because sustainability is a very important um, topic, if that could be included in the different points to be followed up. And um, uh, I had a conversation with Nikolai on Monday and Laura, Micheline, thank you for your um, desire to help. Uh, we already have a couple of ideas uh, at CESA. We have a person who works at Google. So I, I, it came up to be several ideas that we could, I think at the very beginning do so that we can um, generate resources, hopefully in the future, um, for the sustainability of this program. So I would like to suggest that sustainability is included in the different uh, points to be followed up by the management committee, because I think it's the responsibility of all of us to think of ways to make this um, um, sustainable, this initiative. Fully, fully agree, uh, Eden. So uh, this is uh, an important point. Uh, I also uh, have to thank uh, the internal quality assurance and external quality assurance who also pointed uh, as at this. Uh, I also need to thank uh, you, Eden and Laura. Uh, for uh, basically stepping up and uh, also already at this stage uh, uh, starting to generate ideas uh, for the sustainability part and we will be uh, following uh, this this up. 
<clears throat> so uh, the first three committees that uh, that Ginny presented uh, were defined in the project uh, by appointment. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to say, uh, since uh, uh, literally a second, uh, we received the confirmation of the last uh, management committee member uh, that uh, it's Perin who accepts to 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 sit on the committee. Uh, thanks for everyone to, for uh, the willingness to be involved, uh, and also it might be a good idea. Uh, for those uh, who have busy agendas, maybe to uh, point a substitute in case uh, that it's not possible, uh, given the monthly meetings. Uh, uh, of course, we'll need to see how we'll work with uh, the internal quality assurance and uh, uh, with the monitoring. Uh, um, so we don't double, let's say, uh, activities uh, and we keep it in a functional and smooth way. Uh, but I'm sure that we'll find uh, a good way to do that. Other questions, comments? Then advisory board. Uh, and uh, technical uh, committee. Uh, well, there, if you have suggestions for people uh, to be uh, appointed good profiles, let's discuss. There, we didn't send uh, any email out. Uh, we have several ideas, of course, but uh, it would be good to to have uh, a well-composed advisory board and uh, technical committee. A uh, quick question, Nicolai. Yeah. So for this advisory board, uh, yeah, I have some people in mind, but uh, is there any remuneration possibility or something like this? Because if they are not part of the consortia and there is no directly budget available, just want to uh, The The remuneration possibility is zero. Okay. Uh, and uh, the agency uh, said, okay, it makes sense that you want to have a limited advisory board with uh, external partners, but keep in mind that even from the associated partners, you cannot have budget going that direction. Okay. Good. So for some of them, probably uh, I will use other budgets at the VUB, but I cannot take budgets for all four to six uh, people, even for travel. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, good to know in advance, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, un it's unfortunate, uh, but okay. I think that uh, many of those people would like to be involved anyway. So if you have uh, ideas uh, for the technical uh, committee and for the advisory board, uh, let's discuss. Uh, and I would like to start sending messages uh, somewhere early next week. So uh, we have those uh, committees also uh, completed. Any other questions or comments? If not, Abel will guide us through uh, the wonderland of base camp. Can you see my presentation? No, uh, your map we see with all presentations. Uh, I will try it again, just one second. Now? Yes. Okay, I will put it full screen. And I will change here. So I think now it's complete, right? Good. Yep. Okay, so um, you have probably been receiving so many messages from Basecamp 
Uh, and finally, this is the moment in which we can officially introduce to you this uh, project management tool. Um, it has basically uh, the idea of Basecamp is to organize or to find a way to organize and help us to uh, facilitate the communication and the work of the project. And technically this tool is organized uh, in three main sections that I will explain to you uh, very quick. So it has a headquarters, uh, which is like in a, an, analogy, an analogy of any other company uh, where everyone is together. And when you have all the information of the organization, in this case, all information that is relevant for everyone um, of Elanet, we have a specific teams that are places for the teams at every uh, university or, or participant institutions. And we have projects that will be at the beginning, every single part for the um, working packages. So when you open Basecamp, you probably have, all of you have received an invitation. And if there are people still from your um, institutions that are not there yet, for any reason, please let us know so we can add uh, the person to the Basecamp. And in the headquarters, basically, we will be posting all the information, documents, announcements that are relevant for everyone. Uh, at certain point, we have been already here using it quite often for the activities of last week. You were probably seeing pictures passing by from the visits to the universities and to social entrepreneurs. Uh, and it's a way to have a sort of a community uh, in which we all share information and we all post announcements. Everyone is, um, let's say, authorized uh, in the system to make changes to the headquarters, to send messages as well. So please feel free. We recently opened, if you see here in this part of the screen, uh, a box of the visibility of our project. So uh, all of you can share some links and news from your institutions related to Elanet. Uh, and we will take this opportunity or this information to post those uh, news links to the Elanet website. Here also in the doc documents and files, you will have relevant files for the project. For instance, all the partnership agreements that has been signed by BUB are already posted here. So you can either have your own partnership agreement or see the partnership agreements we have signed with all universities. Now, Teams refers to the spaces uh, for each university. So this, you will be able to see only the team at your university. Um, and there, uh, the idea is to have a space for you to communicate or to facilitate the communication with your local teams. And at certain point also, we will collect through each of these team spaces, the information relevant for the uh, different reporting templates your timesheets, your joint declaration form, and your travel reports. Then we have also the projects. So when you log in on the Basecamp, you will be probably seeing the projects in which you are participating at the moment. Uh, this, is, this week is crucial because we are now distributing all the different uh, members of all different working package. So as soon as we collect the information through the Excel that Nikolai and Ginny were mentioning before, we will be uh, inviting every single sub member to the working package and you will be seeing it as well in there. And the idea also there is to have uh, um, all the different files uh, to share information and to, and to facilitate and to have an space, a space for communications. Um, and yeah, some um, interesting tips for, uh, for Basecamp. Uh, for me, it's also the first time, well, actually using it intensively. So uh, we, we are also discovering the tool. So we invite you also to have a look, to discover and to see how it works. Uh, my colleague uh, at VUB, Patricia Fernandez, she is also um, very well involved and ready to support. Um, the idea of Basecamp is to have, um, we invite you to have there um, the opportunity to, to put all the information you see uh, let's say, important or relevant for the project we will collect uh, the final deliverables of the project there in Basecamp. Uh, let's share news, uh, links, and everything you think it's relevant for everyone there. I understand that it might be overwhelming with the, 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 uh, the amount of notifications that Basecamp can, can send to you, but this is something you can also uh, 
adjust yourself in the on the settings. Uh, make sure you don't uh, you don't switch them all <laughs> because you probably will miss important information. But this is something like uh, while you progress and getting familiar with the tool, you will see how it works. Um, and yeah, I think this is it. If you have questions or you need more clarification, then reach out, and with pleasure we will Elanet on Basecamp. Thank you, Abel. Uh, would it be possible, Bell, maybe to go to and to show the base camp the way that you see it, so people realize that uh, they don't see everything that you are seeing, and maybe to show a few uh, tricks over there. You are muted, Bell. Yeah, I will share my screen now of the base camp and share uh, do you see the base camp yep okay so well uh, i see everything basically here but okay as i was mentioning the first thing you everyone need will well, see can you put in a little zoom please uh i don't think so it's possible here no no okay so here is the, uh, okay, the headquarters, as I was mentioning here, here we have well, this message board with all the information and, and, and things that has been posted, the documents and files, the schedule with relevant activities of the project. Uh, we were posting here the information from last week uh, and our colleagues were also adding the pictures and the agendas. So it became a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of interactive. This visibility of the project here, you click and every one of you uh, can post here links or news that your universities are generating for the project. Uh, and I, you, as you may see here, all information is coming up from some of the colleagues. Something interesting from the base camp is that, okay, as people come in, um, new colleagues, for example, join the teams, they will be able to see uh, uh, like a history log of everything that is, has, has happened before with the project. So they can also check and read all the, the different activities of everyone. Then the second thing that you will see are the teams. So probably you don't see all teams, but you see your own uh, home team. I will show you perhaps, uh, well, the VUB, just to be politically correct. Uh, these, are the, 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 these are the teams at VUB. This is the small team at VUB. You have Christina. Uh, Patricia, you have Nikolai uh, and Claudia. We have here our documents and file place, but okay, it's linked to our OneDrive. You can organize it uh, yourself uh, as you wish. There are several possibilities with Google. You can upload the files as, as, as well in there. And then you have all the different working packages. Uh, you have here, well, the management committee that is uh, already organized, as Nikolai mentioned and all different working packages here that you will be seeing. Uh, in, and as soon as people confirm their participation on every single working package, they will come here and they will be joining the teams. Um, well, with the permission of Eden, for example, I will click on her working package and uh, Professor Michelini. And here you have, for example, here, uh, all the different um, materials that are related to communication and dissemination, logo, manuals, uh, invitations that we have been working on uh, for making this kickoff visible, some activities, some exchange of information with well, passwords for <laughs> social media and everything It's here uh, because this is concerning for this working package. And here uh, upstairs, you have a chat function if you want to use it. Here you have some notifications or things that are relevant that happened, you can see here when you enter, you can see what's going on. And the and then, okay, my board here for things that are relevant only for Abel. I don't know if there are more questions and yeah, let's explore and let's see how it works. Uh, don't be afraid. Um, and we are ready here to provide you with some guidance and support. I have a question. Mm -hmm. There's a mobile version, do you know? Uh, because I've been trying to reach from the mobile and, and <clears throat> sometimes I can't. So yes, I don't know, there's application. There is an application. 
Yes, there is an app uh, that you can download. It works well, but it also send you, sends you a lot of notifications. So it depends, it's up to you. Uh, but on the phone, it works really well. Also, there is a, um, an app for the desktop that you can download or you can use it just online. Okay. It's a really good uh, tool. Uh, just a recommendation to see the, the, the messages from the dissemination team <laughs> and, and to promote all the communications that uh, we are working on. So that would be really, really good to see the messages over there. Absolutely. Just this a recommendation a, <laughs> to, to be, to be there. This is a very good uh, point, Mayra. Uh, these two uh, we wanted to use because it's very complete, uh, not only in terms of project management, but also in terms of communication, follow-up of deadlines, uh, interacting uh, between each other. Of course, it may take time. Of course, everyone has uh, his or her own style. Uh, but okay, the more we use it and the more we share uh, and we see the dynamic, uh, the better and the better inspired uh, we can be. So it's very much recommended to use it uh, actively. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments for? <clears throat> I have a question about, I have not navigated it fully, but is there a way we could have like a calendar? Uh, for instance, there are important events that uh, would be visible to all uh, because one, um, I think um, once we have all the programs running, maybe some of our um, colleagues or in the network would be holding some events. So it could be probably published and visible because now with the technology, uh, even if you're not in Ecuador or in Bolivia, maybe it can be made available by Zoom. So I don't know if there's a, a way we could uh, show those types of events and update it on a constant uh, basis. Yeah, sure, Eden. This is a very good question. Uh, and yeah, the, the idea is that on the headquarters, there is a, a group calendar. Uh, and yeah, you all are invited to put in there, let's say, relevant activities or relevant events that are happening and you might consider that are interesting for the whole consortium. Uh, we will up, as well put uh, important things in there. One example is that the kickoff days are uh, posted in there uh, in that group or general calendar as well as we did posted for information of everyone the visit uh, we did for Colombia last week and, and this is an interesting way to keep everyone informed of the dynamics uh, and to keep everyone informed about the activities and also to look back uh, when needed this can also help us to, rem to remember these important events and milestones of the project. One last um, question on this um, is also, are we also uh, coming up with some indicators? Um, for instance, um, last kickoff meeting, we had uh, participants in the Zoom, but there were also participants in the Facebook uh, Live. Are we keeping track of some of the numbers, not only the participants in our events, but also to think of indicators that we could monitor? Because I think that's the way to know whether we are becoming effective in our objectives. So it's in support of social entrepreneurs, probably we might have to think of um, different indicators to see throughout this period of time, how we're evolving in that sense. Uh, very good question, uh, Eden. So uh, during the live uh, streaming of uh, the open event, uh, with Abel, we were busy with the event, so we didn't uh, even notice. Uh, but uh, Gerardo from Uni Magdalena told us that uh, there were 300 participants. <clears throat> so 140 uh, were the participants on the Zoom, 300 on uh, the, um, the Facebook streaming. Uh, and I found so there were two messages, uh, two videos uh, sent out by Uni Magdalena. Uh, the last 
time that I saw them, one uh, was uh, viewed 1,400 times and the other 1,300 times. But this will probably evolve. Uh, I forward them, did them myself so uh, I can keep track of it. And probably it would be a good idea that uh, uh, the social media of, uh, of Elanet forwards them as well to keep track of them. Uh, then uh, for this afternoon, we are planning also to stream it uh, through, through Facebook, uh, through our uh, chair. Uh, social media because uh, there are the more people uh, involved and it might be good that the different institutions forward uh, the streaming to to increase the visibility of course after the event Nikolai uh, sorry may I may I say something very quickly just to complement what you were saying and just uh, answering also uh, Aiden's uh, question regarding the indicators Mm -hmm. So yes, we we do in fact have uh, many indicators for the for the project. Uh, this is included. Uh, some information on that will be included in the quality plan that we will present to you next Wednesday. Uh, but uh, if you want to check those related to visibility and to all the different activities. Um, you can also, there is a, a part in the description of our project where you can see the indicators. Um, there are two parts, I think one specifically for impact and visibility. And then also we have many indicators included in the logical framework metrics. So just if you want to, you know, go into detail, uh, there is information on that, uh, but it's absolutely essential that any event that we organize, whether it is at an, internal level or as a consortium that we have that we keep track of those uh participations as you say so yeah it's all it's all there uh, could i say something uh, uh excellent nikolai and uh, alejandra what you are mentioning uh as uh, as far as i understood uh, evan was uh, mentioning that uh, it's important to have these indicators more visible uh, so that uh, every every everyone uh, can see it, uh, because that's very important uh, for the project. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yes, to, to align, I think, to, to be aligned, everyone. So we also know what are the indicators that are, uh, we're, and it can also evolve. Um, through time, we can probably think of new indicators. Uh, it's not set in stone what we have uh, defined because as we go along the project, probably better ideas can come up. So I think it's important that everyone knows what, we're what our goals are, targets, but also our milestones um, and indicators are our are, are milestones also. Absolutely, fully, fully agree. Uh, and uh, if there are people good at social media and they know how uh, this communication can go viral, uh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, it would be good uh, to to create more visibility and see how to push it further. Through. But now I'm looking also at the timing uh, and uh, propose to go. To our colleagues from VUB, uh, Peter, Arthur, and uh, Hannah Lore, uh, who will guide us through the financial uh, rules and procedures of the project. Hi everyone, how are you? I hope uh, I hope the kickoff has been going well so far. Um, Abel, can you tell me what's easiest? Uh, do you share my presentation or can I share my screen? No, you can share your screen, Arthur, directly. Okay. Uh, to be honest, we all, always do everything on the, on Teams. So if someone can point me to the to the button to share my screen. Uh, uh, below, nearby the end call, you will see share screen with an arrow up, a green arrow up. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, we can. You can put it now in presentation mode and we will see it better. Yes. All right, let's shoot. 
Um, so to start off, I'm, uh, my name is Arthur. I'm a financial project manager at the VUB. Um, and as mentioned, I'm helped by a few colleagues, Peter and Hannelore, but they won't be joining us today. Um, I have prepared some general info, but of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know the action period of the project. Um, and then a small update. The GA has been signed by the VUB and the, the Commission. The, all the PAs have been signed. Uh, and regarding the pre-financing, we're almost there. So they, if, uh, I would say apart from one payment, all the first pre-financing payments have been processed. They're just waiting for one more affiliated entity to provide uh, their, their pick. Then also regarding the pre-financing, I think this is important because we've already had a few questions regarding these topics. As you can see on the slide, the transaction costs uh, are to be borne by the partner who's re receiving payments. So that means when you get your pre-financing, I think uh, in, the, in the cases we've already had, it was about 40 euros or something. Transaction costs, which go off the pre-financing amount, but um, it's easiest to do it like this. It's always done like this because if we have to share the transaction costs between the VUB and the receiving partner, that means we have to really calculate the whole budget. Um, so we will leave it at that. Then, of course, there is always financial uh, reporting. There's two reports in this case, but as you can see, there's still quite some time. It will be only at the end of 2022 that we need to uh, file the first report. And it's very important to note that every partner is responsible for the accuracy of their own reports. So we will, we will contact all the partners from the VUB side when the time comes. Uh, but you're responsible for, uh, for your own reports. Um, then I think it's been mentioned as well, there is going to be an audit by an external auditor. And here, actually, the responsibility is fully with the VUB. So we have to provide um, the, all the data to the auditor, but of course, these auditors, they're always, uh, let's say, booked for maybe one week or two weeks on a certain project. So we will have them for a few weeks. And during those weeks, it will be really important that every partner is, uh, let's say, very responsive if we have some questions uh, coming from the auditor, because if we wait too long, then by that time, uh, if you wait too long to provide them with answers, by that time, they will be on a different um, uh, client already, the auditor, and it will be complicated and expensive. Um, then, just as a general mention, I've included the link, the EC guide for, the, uh, for these types of projects, for your Erasmus Plus projects, where you can find basically an overview of all the general rules. So I think, um, Abel probably has already shared this presentation with you or can do so after the meeting. And this link is really handy for, uh, for uh, uh, like, let's say, as a first source of info whenever you have any questions on finance. Here you can see a quick overview of the budget uh, amounting to about 1 million euros in total. And then we will, we will, let's say, delve into some of the general rules for the budget. First off, there is some co-financing provided for facilities, printing costs, phone costs, and equipment usage. I think it's about 96,000 in total divided over all the partners. Uh, so keep this in mind that you will have to show to the EC that you are co-financing some of these costs, let's say, on top of the grants. There's also some ineligible costs, and I think this could be really important here because, uh, yes, the ineligible costs related to equipment, it won't be too much of an issue, issue for you, like furniture and motor vehicles, you know. But then, related to subcontracting, this is really important. You cannot sub subcontract any project management tasks. So, of course, Basecamp is not subcontracting because it's a tool, so that is okay. Uh, if you invite experts on the, on the management committee, 
to just help out, let's say, that should be okay as well. But uh, you cannot, this expert, like external people cannot really be the project managers. So of course you can do this, but uh, you won't be able to report these costs and be reimbursed by the commission if you do so. Um, and that brings us to the last point on this slide. Each of you, every partner is responsible for the use of their own budget. So simply put, you can use, uh, you can make all types of costs uh, as you wish for the project, but in the end, you are responsible to follow the reimbursement rules, the eligibility rules from the commission. If you, do, if you don't do so, then the ineligible costs won't be, uh, won't be reimbursed and that will be only your responsibility, so not the VUBs. Then let's, let's see, um, of course you have to keep some supporting documents whenever you make costs in order for these costs to be eligible. Maybe it's important to start off on this slide with the difference between unit costs and actual costs. So as you can see in the table in the left part, the personnel and the travel and stay costs are to be reported as unit costs. So this means um, that uh, the, the amount that you will report to the commission in most cases won't be equal to the actual cost incurred by you, by the university. For example, for personnel, if we look into the budget, we can see that uh, for the VUB, for example, a manager is, uh, is to, be, to be reimbursed at 280 euros a day. So that's uh, irrespective of his or her salary. If, if, a, if a manager works on the project for 10 days, you will be reimbursed 2,800 euros by the commission, irrespective of whether that's more or less than the actual salary cost that the, that the university incurred. So that's really important to keep in mind. Um, and then for travel and stay, also unit costs. It's also all in the budget, so it's really easy to go check what the unit costs are. Uh, and then you, there you have the, the travel costs, which are also forfeit area, and they're just a, a function of the, of the distance traveled. And then you have the stay costs, and they're calculated uh, as a, a unit cost per day which also depends on where you're going to. So some, some countries, some cities will have a higher, a higher unit cost per day, so more reimbursement per day than others. So that's really, really important. If you have any questions on uh, unit cost versus actual cost, let's say, please, please mention it after the presentation, because uh, once you get it, it's simple, but it can cause some confusion at first. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's quickly go through the supporting documents that you need. For the employment contracts, you will need the salary slips of all the researchers uh, appointed on the, on, the, on the project. But you will also need timesheets, which are a template provided by the EC. We will provide this, uh, th these timesheets to you. And also, when the audit comes, you will need the employment contracts of all these, all these um, employees. Normally, that's not the case just uh, for, the, for the reporting to the EC, but it is a requirement for the external audits. Then for travel and stay, let's say the most important thing is that you can prove the direct link with the project. So, for example, whenever you're traveling for a, for a meeting, uh, as stated, you should really keep the agenda of the meeting, you should keep a signed participant list and so on and so on. Of course, keep the boarding passes as well. Um, and then I think those are the more, most important things. Other than that, in general, you should uh, keep the invoice and the proof of payments of every cost that you make. So um, I think we can we can skip this slide it's uh, more on the unit costs um, this link is handy if you want to calculate the staff costs but i think it's actually the most clear simply in the budget uh, in the uh, excel form budget 
there you have a really good overview of the unit cost for staff as well as travel and cost of stay. And then, last but not least, I, I hear that this is also quite an important point that uh, there are potentially a lot of questions. We have to provide all the requests for payments and all the financial statements, so both reports and the audit reports, in euros. Um, but of course, a lot of you, the, your local currency is not in euro. So you should use the link here below and basically use the exchange rate, uh, exchange rate provided by the European, uh, European Commission. It's very straightforward uh, through the link, but, uh, but it's really important that you do it, of course, because if we don't publish them in, uh, in, in euros, but in a different currency, same thing, they will not be eligible. Um, I think that is about it. So, <laughs> Uh, I am pretty new to, to uh, financial management, to be honest. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me and to put my primary colleagues, Hannelore and Peter, in, uh, in CC, especially Peter, because he's actually uh, the, the, the VUB expert on Erasmus Plus projects. So uh, is, if there's any questions now, please, please shoot. I don't know if everything was clear or not, so uh, I'm, I'm here to answer your questions. Uh, just a short question of subcontracting. Can you uh, repeat what kind of costs are eligible for subcontracting? For subcontracting, the only ineligible costs, so the cost that you will not be reimbursed for, is subcontracting of project management. So, of course, this is, let's say, a bit of a gray area. That's why, uh, as stated before, I, um, I think the base camp, uh, even though it's a project management tool, it's, it's, it's uh, not subcontracting because it's not a service provided, it's, it's just a, a membership fee basically. So that's okay. Uh, if, you if you have an expert helping you from time to time with project management, that should be fine as well. But so that can be included as a subcontracting? That that's can be included, yes, but it needs to be limited. Like it, it needs to be limited. There is no, let's say, number of hours or or uh, or uh, or stuff like that as a limit. But it's. Uh, I mean, I think all of you um, can make the difference yourself. Whether the expert is helping you or actually doing the project management, and you are helping them. So that's that's the that's the difference, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Thanks, Arthur, for uh, the the presentation. Uh, I think uh, was uh, very clear. Of course, uh, if there are questions and comments, don't hesitate. It's an important topic. Uh, I want also to add to this uh, that uh, the importance of the topic uh, is also related to the experience that people have with internationalization and projects like this. So I know that uh, Alejandra from Unisavana is managing uh, such a project as a coordinator. I know that uh, uh, Jeannie and Vanessa were involved in such projects. I know that uh, uh, Uni Magdalena is involved and probably various uh, of your universities are involved. For those of you who don't have that uh, experience, please reach out uh, and, uh, and let us uh, know as well if we can organize uh, a training that is, let's say, more elaborated. Because uh, what happens contractually is that uh, you receive, uh, uh, and why Arthur is mentioning that it's pre-financing, because we have a grant with a maximum amount the budget of the project. Uh, what the European Commission will do uh, after the two audits will say, okay, do we agree that this amount of money is correctly spent? And if it's not correctly spent, they don't uh, send all the money to us. And uh, as a consequence, that money will not uh, come to you. If you spend it or you didn't spend it, that is something else. You might have spent it, but they don't agree on the way that you have spent it. 
uh, and then we have issues. So it would be, there is also another difference when we were traveling to Colombia, we realized very well with Abel that there are internal rules uh, on how uh, we can spend uh, money and the European rules. So for example, our, uh, our tickets for the flights are not that important for the European Union. So you need to have them and you need to have the payment as uh, an expense to show that you went there. Uh, but then there is uh, the travel amount that goes out. If you pay more or less, the European Union doesn't care too much. So there are European rules and your own university rules that you need to keep in mind. <clears throat> so the uh, long story short, uh, if there are universities uh, who don't have that much experience with uh, European projects, uh, please let us know. We will organize uh, something so it is clear for everyone to avoid uh, confusing situations. But the thing is, if uh, after an audit, uh, European uh, Commission or auditors don't agree uh, of eligibility of, uh, of costs, uh, we cover them ourselves. Meaning, uh, if we spend at VUB in incorrect way, VUB covers, uh, if uh, Edgar spent them at ESPOL, in the incorrect way, Edgar covers. So it's important to uh, to to understand uh, the financial mechanics and uh, all rules uh, and to have all proofs. Uh, that list of participants uh, is uh, an interesting one, but yeah, apparently very important. Yeah, one more short question. This, so you said the reporting requirement is this financial report. So that's it. These two report, as far as the reporting requirement goes. <coughs> yes, financial. Yes. Okay. 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 So very good, let's move then uh, further if there are no further questions uh, to working package one. Edgar and Andrea. Edgar, would you like me to share the presentation? Or are you going to share? Okay. You're muted, Edgar. Edgar. No, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, do you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, first of all, I, I, I would like to thank uh, Nikolai, Professor Nikolai and Chef, uh, uh, Vel, and all the team at BUV for uh, their leadership and all the partners. Uh, for their commitment and the desire for the success of this uh, great project. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are uh, presenting uh, this wo working package number one. Um, as uh, our team members, uh, uh, we have uh, at this poll, uh, Virginia Lasio, the former Dean, at the Business School of uh, Sport, SPI. Um, uh, Adriana Amaya, professor. Um, Andrea uh, Samaniego, who is a PhD student, and myself, Edgar Izquierdo. Well, uh, first, uh, I think it's important to highlight the general objective of this working package number one. And we are to make an assessment uh, on uh, reporting of social entrepreneur needs and also the, about the capacities in support of social entrepreneurship. And uh, according to the, um, the uh, LNET project description, we have some specific objectives. Uh, uh, two of them are um, 
related to the reporting part uh, about the needs of local uh, social entrepreneurs and also about the um, uh, capacities of the universities in support of uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, after that, uh, after collecting uh, data, uh, we are to perform a gap analysis of uh, social entrepreneurs' needs and also about the uh, um, university's capacities. Uh, we, I will mention uh, later on about uh, some specific details about these uh, specific objectives. Um, we propose this uh, approach uh, first, of course, uh, is to um, use uh, uh, theoretical frameworks uh, um, related to social entrepreneurship needs and uh, for the uh, uh, capacities of universities uh, among different uh, um, all the partners uh, in uh, the internet project. Um, then uh, search and selection of skills that we have uh, been working uh, during the, the last two weeks uh, to be prepared for um, sharing with all the internet partners. Uh, after that, we propose to make a socialization of these skills uh, among LNL partners. So we will uh, send this to uh, uh, the partners so that they can uh, give us some feedback from, uh, uh, I mean, uh, respect to the, uh, the scales we are proposing. And uh, finally, uh, we uh, think it's important to have a meeting with uh, the internet partners uh, in order to have a final version of the instruments uh, for data collection. It's important to highlight that uh, uh, within this um, internet project, uh, there is a, a very important component, which is the, the research part. So uh, this will be something that uh, uh, together we, uh, we will uh, have uh, of these uh, data collected uh, so that uh, uh, after that, we can think about the, uh, the publications we can uh, have out of these uh, data. Then um, it's important to mention also that uh, some of the partners like Ashoka and Coalect uh, uh, have mentioned about the needs of some uh, uh, data so Ashoka um, uh, is going to use these, um, uh, these uh, data regarding the uh, resources and needs of uh, each uh, uh, university uh, within the LNET project, um, uh, both for network building and uh, entrepreneurial support they are working on. And also Coalect, uh, um, they they need uh, some uh, information, some data based on service and interactions of uh, stakeholders, so they can take uh, into account in the uh, platform they are working on. And if there is uh, uh, any other partner who think uh, who thinks that uh, uh, they uh, they have some suggestions. I mean, they some uh, data they 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 think uh, it's important to collect. So let us know so that we can include that uh, before having the the meeting with all the partners, element partners. So um, for the um, uh, social entrepreneurs' needs, uh, we have been working on uh, a conceptual framework based on the uh, existing uh, entrepreneurship literature. So we think that uh, all these uh, dimensions are very important, like the uh, you, uh, networking, uh, the replicability of uh, the, uh, this initiative, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, social uh, uh, entrepreneurial ventures, social impact, uh, um, uh, what the capabilities uh, for management, uh, these entrepreneurs uh, have, uh, of course, what uh, institutional support they they have for their uh, ventures and uh, 
the need for funding. So in, in each of these uh, dimension, we have been, um, I mean, we defined uh, as uh, a proposal for collecting data. Um, uh, so for example, for the need uh, for funding, uh, we have these, uh, of course, all of these scales have been uh, um, found in the literature. So uh, we propose uh, these uh, scales to, for the data collection. So I won't be uh, in, uh, in too much detail about each of these ones, of course, because there are many of them, but uh, these uh, scales are, are we, um, uh, the ones we are proposing. So for human resource management, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have uh, in each of them, the Chromebox uh, Alpha, just to, to see how um, good they are for collecting data. For management capabilities, uh, we have uh, different ones, for example, insight into the market, uh, ability to persuade, planning for the future, um, awareness of potential returns on investment. Uh, for the networking part, of course, we have uh, another um, paper uh, from which uh, we uh, found this scale. And um, um, also uh, we have another one for the, the networks. I mean, if you think that uh, any of them shouldn't be used, so uh, I think it's important uh, for you to uh, let us know about it. Uh, um, this is part of the feedback uh, we are expecting from all LNET partners. Uh, for the expandability, I mean, replicability of the, the uh, Social Entrepreneurs in, uh, Entrepreneur Initiative. Uh, also, we have another scale for the social impact of the uh, initiative, um, institutional support. So each of these are part of the um, uh, dimensions we mentioned before in uh, the conceptual framework. And for the uh, university capacity um, for social entrepreneurship uh, uh, support, uh, we uh, found this from the OECD. Uh, it's a guiding framework uh, for entrepreneurial university. I think uh, this uh, seems to be a nice uh, framework to collect data regarding the um, capacities of uh, universities. So um, um, this, um, I mean, this part has two, I mean, according to our uh, suggestion, it has two uh, parts of uh, these. Uh, first is a kind of a descriptive statistic uh, and, uh, um, also for, uh, uh, I mean, for this part, we, uh, we consider on a scale from zero to 10. Um, then uh, uh, I will uh, like to give this, um, uh, I mean, the possibility for Andrea to explain a little bit uh, about uh, all these uh, uh, scales that we found. Please go ahead, uh, Andrea. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm not sure if I have to share uh, the screen or- No, I, I will do it. I will Can do you it. put it in presentation mode, please? Okay, presentation, uh, just a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so just to have a quick look of the scales we have found in literature. Uh, uh, all right. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Go yeah, ahead, so please. This framework Edgar just explained is based on the OACD. Um, so these are not quantitative scales. These are uh, self-assessment scales in which each part, each university assess themselves in these um, dimensions. So the first one is access to funding. Uh, the second one is based on the training that the university offers to social entrepreneurs and vulnerable entrepreneurs. 
So we have, uh, in, in training, we have some, some questions for their self-assessment. The third one is about the global networking or the global network links. Um, basically how the university have these links with, with other partners. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is tangible facilities. So um, basically is if the university supports social entrepreneurs through um, the access to the facilities like working spaces, maker spaces, uh, or other facilities in the university. Um, the other one is about the impact measurement because we think that it is important uh, to, to establish measurements and indicators for the universities to assess their impact um, in social entrepreneurship. And leadership and governance, um, we consider is also important. It's included also in the framework that I mentioned. And we have um, found um, quantitative scales uh, regarding to the institutional support. So the author is Rahman, among other authors. And basically it's divided in training support and information support. These are the scales for training. And this one is for information support. Uh, so we have considered um, Mm -hmm. Alpha Cronbach uh, um, with a minimum of 0 0.8. Um, Edgar, would you like to share the, the timeline? Okay. Uh, next steps? Yeah, for the uh, timeline, uh, I think it's important to mention that we have until uh, uh, the middle of uh, uh, month seven uh, to finish. Uh, uh, with the gap analysis, of course, after collecting the data. Uh, so uh, I, th I think it's important to, um, to mention, of course, that uh, we will be working with the LNA partners. So for the feedback, we are expecting to have this uh, on, on April 1st uh, as a deadline. Um, and after that, uh, to have a meeting with all the LNA partners, uh, to in order to uh, f to have a final version of the instruments and uh, and to begin collecting data immediately, uh, so we propose uh, April sixth, and um, then um, each uh, LNET partner uh, will be responsible to uh, collect data uh, within uh, their context, and, and then with the for the gap analysis, each partner uh, will be responsible for making the gap analysis. Later on, we can uh, have a, a, a kind of a consolidation of these uh, all these information. And uh, of course, it's important to mention that the references we will uh, share all the references we found in order to uh, uh, I mean. For, for the internet partners to, to take a look and uh, make uh, any suggestion and to receive feedback from them. Uh, that's, that's all uh, we wanted to present. I thank you very much for your interest in this presentation. Thank you, Edgar and Andrea. Are there questions or comments for Edgar and Andrea? So I want to uh, point the attention to several aspects. Uh, mm -hmm. One is that, uh, so from working package two, uh, Polek and Ashoka were mentioned, but I think, uh, so uh, working package uh, 2.3 and 2.4, uh, which are on the, a mobilization of uh, higher education uh, faculty and students uh, may uh, have some needs. So those are uh, those are Uni Norte leading this working package. Uh, then a mobilization of uh, external stakeholders. Uh, those are uh, Gerardo from Uni Magdalena and Remy from uh, Uni Pura, um, and. Uh, 
it might be good, uh, Edgar and Andrea, to to have a discussion with uh, the various people so they can give an input. Uh, for me personally, if it is not the 6th of April, but uh, the end of April final version, uh, and I see them as two instruments, uh, one for social entrepreneurs and one for universities, uh, it would be okay then if we can uh, collect data uh, in May. Uh, so, okay, four weeks uh, should... Uh, uh, should be okay, but then uh, everyone of us needs to be uh, aware of that. So mainly the, the main focus uh, are the partner universities in Latin America. Uh, let's be honest, uh, yeah, I would be interested uh, myself to collect data in Belgium as well. Uh, and if there are people, uh, yeah, Laura in Italy, Arashit in Austria, uh, and uh, Ilya in, in Sofia, uh, we can do as well. But uh, okay, the main focus uh, are the partner countries. Uh, and uh, it would be good uh, in working package one, there are uh, different partners. Uh, already assigned so it would be good for Edgar and Andrea already to to coordinate with those people for the whole working package uh, mm -hmm. for the final uh, gap in that. absolutely thank you but please have a look at uh, the the presentation of Edgar and Andre. If you have uh, scales, suggestions, uh, improvements, needs for uh, your working package further, uh, it would be good to, instead of going to social entrepreneurs and to universities uh, with ten different instruments to collect data, to go with one uh, that can be later on also. Uh, used uh, and uh, uh, we will uh, offer from our university the possibility to use Qualtrics uh, so the information uh, got immediately online uh, where possible of course uh, for vulnerable entrepreneurs that uh, might be another story but we will see how to resolve. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments for uh, Edgar and Andrea further? Um, yeah, I mean, just following up, Nikolai, what you said about uh, that uh, running these surveys also in Austria, Belgium. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I mean, I can forward it among the social entrepreneurship network that I have and see how many uh, we get. Uh, and so that is definitely possible. For the university uh, survey, uh, at what level people should fill this out in case I want to mm -hmm. fill this out uh, at the university level? So who should fill this out and at what level of uh, yeah, hierarchy wise? Yeah. Well, I think uh, we need uh, to come back to each university with, with a protocol. Uh, <laughs> To, to whom and how, uh, and uh, yes, it's a good question. Because these are very strategic mm -hmm. questions that you were asking and, and, and yeah, so, mm -hmm. so I think, yeah, some clarity on that, who should answer that and depending on how high that person is, the time availability and also, uh, yeah, so that is one thing mm -hmm. good to clarify, yeah. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, it should be, uh, those people who are close, uh, I mean, to the management, uh, I mean, the authorities, so they can have uh, at least uh, good answers for, for these questions, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, Gerardo and Eden uh, have a question. Gerardo? Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks, Nikolai, for for your advice and I'm going to contact Edgar and Andrea to align our activities. I, I realize that the similar, similar similarities in order to align our activities. Very good. Eden? 
I, I was just wondering if, because we have faculty and researchers, is there, um, uh, have we considered um, case studies um, through in-depth interviews to see the needs of local entrepreneurs? And based on that, uh, using NVivo statistic, uh, NVivo packages, because probably um, in Latin America, um, the needs will be similar but maybe uh, there will be some uh, needs also that will be uh, transversal with um, the European social entrepreneurs. But to see more the context, how about encouraging our academics to, to do qualitative research? And out of those qualitative research, maybe you can do a quanti quantitative analysis once you have a huge um, uh, participation of the social entrepreneurs. I think excellent the Likert scale, but um, we could probably consider also this type of uh, qualitative methods that can give us a deeper context of the needs of social entrepreneurs. I don't know if that's, uh, uh, that could be covered by the project. I completely agree. Uh, I think it's important that we can uh, have this uh, kind of uh, research as well. Uh, yeah, that's my opinion. Sure, it's a good point. Uh, it, uh, we can also do a focus group discussion. Uh, the thing is with qualitative research, we'll never finish with the gap analysis based on qualitative research in June uh, or July. Uh, so if people want to do the qualitative research, let's do it. But uh, let's also focus on the quantitative. So we have a report by the summer, right? Uh, so I'm looking again at the timing um, and uh, well, we're just in time for the final presentation. Uh, I think uh, Kaola will do the presentation that uh, Anne-Sophie uh, prepared uh, together with, uh, uh, with her. So Kaola, can you please... Uh, Go ahead with the presentation. It's not Kaola, it would be me. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, very good, very it's good. It's an office, but... <laughs> Hello, everyone. Perfect. My name is Eugenia, not Kaola, and I also work at International Relations Office uh, working on projects. So I'm replacing Anne-Sophie, which is the file manager at IRMO, so the international office for this project in particular, but we all work on different Erasmus Plus projects all together. So I also try to share the screen because I'm also used to um, Teams uh, right now. You should see the screen right now. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can see it. You can put it in presentation mode. I will, I will. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Good. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so I already presented myself. Um, I'm happy to be here as such a big consortium. It's one of the biggest projects like, uh, we have, actually. So it's really good to e-meet you. That's the only possibility we have uh, right now. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Um, our part of the presentation uh, today, and I will keep it short if it's the last one and you're all tired and somehow it comes to um, uh, yeah, normal considerations about the way you're uh, conducting your project. It's a focus on uh, COVID and the impact of your activities and how to deal with this. You already started your project in the middle of the pandemic. So in a way you are already doing uh, and adjusting uh, your activities and your timeline. Uh, hold on because, well, um, I, my colleague has put here some advices that the Executive Agency for Education and Culture um, has shared during the grant holders meeting in uh, 2021, so at the beginning of the year, uh, on how to deal uh, with the effect of the pandemic on, on projects. Um, I think the first three ones are the most relevant in a way, I'm going to go through them. 
And uh, the first is to review the work plan, um, which is uh, which means to regularly review it, uh, given that we don't really know when this is gonna go back to normality and obviously has a big impact uh, on your work. You were talking about a uh, collection of data, et cetera. Um, anything that can be advanced in your work and uh, can be postponed um, should be shifted um, with a great flexibility, uh, of course, on your side. And uh, given that this doesn't really impact too much uh, the, the normal timeline of, of the activities that uh, should be followed. Um, and you should decide, of course, what activities, and this is something to discuss uh, for you, maybe another meeting, could also be kept online for the future on a medium um, longer term, uh, as we really don't know in how many months we will be able to, to travel mostly, because travel is the most um, important thing that you're not able to do. Um, and the, about this, uh, you of course will have uh, right now um, a lot of budget that would not be used immediately uh, for what it concerns transnational project meetings. Um, so the advice of um, the executive agency is to do not make amendments right now. So as a, as a project, as a coordinator, as a partnership together, uh, let's not uh, you know, worry too much right now about the money that are unspent um, why? Because you have a flexibility of using 10% of certain budget categories and move them to other budget categories without asking an amendment. So you can actually, uh, if you see that you're going to be in need uh, of more money, uh, let's say, for uh, activities of your implementation um, staff, for example, uh, you could move up to 10% from a certain budget category to another one on the premises that uh, each budget category is not incremented of more than 10% itself. Um, so this is one solution. You already have flexibility in the contract with the EU, uh, but also your project just started. It started like uh, in January 2021 and has a 36 months duration. So um, I would start worrying about budgets or amendments and how to move and really uh, reassess the budget that is unspent uh, on the longer term, close to the interim report, the, financial, the first interim financial report that you will have to do to the European Commission. Why? Because all together, so all partners, so the, the whole partnership needs to prove that you spent 70% of the budget uh, of the pre-financing that has been granted to you in the, in the first place. And if you uh, cannot prove that you use the 70%, then uh, the second pre-financing can come at a later stage. So when you get closer uh, to this uh, uh, interim report, a big overview and a rearrangement perhaps of the budget might be needed between and within partners as well. But for the moment, I think you have uh, flexible ways of uh, working all together. You just prove this, you, um, you work through Basecamp right now. So you have really good way and experience as well. I, I've heard during your presentations that several partners have capacity building in, uh, running in their universities or organizations. Um, other um, more common sense advices from uh, the European Commission, so the executive agency was to ensure strong communication between partners and perhaps sharing information on a regular basis, use digital tools that you're already doing, and it's very good, uh, the, the decision of using Basecamp, and uh, show general flexibility. So this is more uh, an approach that is requested to partners in order to find solutions either through uh, your coordinator and all at the, at the back, we can also support. And if uh, a solution um, is uncertain for everybody, remember that uh, the project officer that the European Commission in charge of this project in particular will always be there for answering our questions and your questions as well. Um, 
my colleague has left some positive messages for you because we've seen really uh, a positive approach uh, taking place in this uh, project. Uh, this is your kickoff, but you already started working and actually you already had uh, small uh, meetings um, and this is how to actually deal because you have so many partners um, in this in this project that this is probably the way uh, to move forward uh, to keep on having regular uh, preparatory meetings even smaller one per work packages per universities per consortium you can decide you don't have any way of meeting each other and getting a feeling of what you're doing all together which might lead you to lose motivation or um, as well I just like to lose perspective sometimes as we all working online all the time. So instead of perhaps sending millions of emails, just keep regular um, uh, small meetings. Um, another good um, point uh, about your project that we observed is that there's no major budget changes for the moment, but uh, as I said previously, we use Basecamp. And there's uh, really a dedicated project team. Uh, this uh, for us really goes through the contacts that we have with the coordinator, so the colleagues at the VUB. Um, but as well that you have many, uh, you have much experience in uh, capacity building projects. So both at the VUB, but in other universities as well. So just make use of this, ask colleagues if you're uncertain on how to use the budget and uh, what to do how to report, what documents to keep, uh, just ask. Uh, challenges that you might face, uh, it's that your large consortium, as I said, uh, you might um, lose dedication uh, or meetings as this one, and I will just briefly <laughs> interrupt my presentation, speaking of which, uh, may become very long. So just keep uh, perhaps short agendas and regular consortium meetings on a regular basis, even more frequently that you uh, actually thought it was needed. Um, and you might use breakout rooms to brainstorm or jointly prepare tasks and uh, have contacts on small groups. Uh, so you can start working per country, per working groups, just find ideas of perhaps getting more in touch with each other. Uh, some things that um, might not be done, um, if, for example, you cannot uh, review the work plan substantially at certain point, that, that this is a question that will have to go back um, to the executive agency if there's really no way and we cannot find creative solutions together. Um, there's the possibility to request an extension of the project, yes. But I will not keep the idea of extending the project at its very end as the solution for possible delays in the work due to the COVID situation. Uh, why? Because your project is already 36 months. So the maximum that can be granted to a capacity building project. And your project has been selected under the last call of the Erasmus Plus program of the previous framework, so in 2020. That means that the European Commission as well has its own agenda and its own framework under which all the projects should be ending. So you're not gonna have much time um, and you're not gonna get a big extension if you would ever want to go for it. And in any way, this needs to be asked to the project officer at the, um, at the executive agency. But uh, I will not count on the extension at the very end of the project as a perspective uh, for uh, solving problems right now. Um, other potential challenges and solution. Uh, well, one is certainly that many of you uh, might not know each other. You didn't work together and working together through a screen, it's not the easiest part. So this goes back again to um, setting up small meetings to get to know each other, uh, perhaps even like in a team building uh, form or with like social interactions that might create a team spirit uh, that goes beyond these big and long uh, meetings that you will have and then they're already scheduled for you as consortium meetings. 
um, that a colleague said that uh, one of you perhaps had the, the idea to have a university orchestra playing uh, during a coffee break. That's very nice. I hope you can manage to do so. Um, and please do invite us in that case. Um, overall, I think uh, you should not worry too much uh, right now. Uh, it's very frustrating for you to work on a certain task that needs to be postponed, I realize. Um, we are always uh, here for supporting you if you have any questions about changes in budget, uh, uh, activities that can be changed or not, and how. Uh, feel free to ask questions through the coordinator. Uh, overall, I think you show great flexibility and we all uh, you know, used by now to work online. Um, and if this doesn't work with your uh, work schedule, uh, we can find other solutions. Um, if you have questions uh, specifically, um, please uh, just go ahead. Thanks, uh, Eugenia, very much for the presentation. Any questions? Unfortunately, you have uh, no big indications in your grant agreement about how to deal uh, with budget or uh, delays of activities. Uh, is not been stated by the European Commission on purpose, I think, because they want to have perhaps a gray zone uh, within which you can be flexible and work and work on ad hoc solutions for your project. Uh, for this reason, I think there is no uh, problem uh, on paper for your project, but of course, uh, you know how the implementation will go better than me, so. Sure. Um. Thanks, uh, uh, Eugenia, for uh, for the presentations, also for the motivating uh, words. Uh, I want to remind now everyone that within three minutes uh, we are expected uh, to to join the round table. Uh, before we go and join the round table, please put on the cameras, smile. Uh, and give the thumbs up as the last time for the social media. And with one, I will take the print screen because otherwise. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, let's go to the round table. Uh, take care, everyone, and uh, see you next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.